For those of you that are new subscribers, hi, thanks for joining us. Um, we've gotten quite a few of you. Well, hey there. <laughs> um, this is what our show, we are not a... Uh, a uh, we're not a paid promotion show. Not a paid promotion. We're not a promotion show generally in general. We're a speculation show. We're an opinion show. We have um, our own opinions, our own very strong opinions about <laughs> things, and we're going to tell you all about those opinions. <laughs> yes. So uh, yes. take everything with a, with a grain of salt because it's highly biased. Um, hmm. So here's what I want to here's what I want to throw out. Toy shock in general. In so he... <laughs> <laughs> it's what they are. Is the, do you think that they are going to step up their game and actually come out with their second version model? The second version model was that, was going to have a DMD on the screen rather than having the uh, just the score displays that the current uh, general was going to have and would have the remaining Gottlieb tables that weren't... Well, I mean, they were saying they were going to have all 22 Gottlieb tables, but... If they weren't, it's basically that the tables that aren't on their Gen 1 are all the tables that are DMD tables. That's right. So that was going to be their plan was to come out with a Wave 2 that was going to have a DMD screen on it and do that. Do you think that that is ever going to see the light of day? No. <laughs> Next question. Okay, so why no and, and why is that? Oh, because they've been trumped. Like, there's better, there's better platforms out there now. Part, far side of snuggled up into bed with at games, and you know they're very, very comfortable in that little bed that they've now made themselves away from uh, Toy Shock. Okay. Um. So I don't think, I don't think they're going to be doing that. They far side have just shifted camps pretty much. Like, so uh, that. So at <laughs> games obviously has that second monitor. Yeah. Um which would allow them to basically they're not dependent upon is this score to display is it a, a dmd that second yeah. monitor can, can become whatever the heck uh farsight programs it to be mm -hmm. that second monitor do you see that becoming something that arcade one up will then adopt sooner rather than later or will it be a wait and see for the arcade one up cabs uh it will be a gen 2 release for sure. The wow. When they release a, um, a set of cabinets, it's going to absolutely have a second screen in the back box, full size, as part of the bill of materials. And do you, it, think, do you think that's going to be... So do you think that's going to be, though, uh, same price point? Or will they obviously oh, no, then have to raise expensive. the price? It will be more expensive. So maybe by the $50 so that it's the same price as at games? Because right now those cabs are 450 uh, yeah. Or excuse me, 550 at games is at 600. Yep, I think they will. They will feature match and price accordingly. So when you uh, say feature match, you're also saying that you think Gen 2 will have Wi-Fi. 100. percent That's like they already like. You can derive from what Mel and and John Dynamon are saying that they're doing it very carefully the first time around. But you can almost guarantee that they're at the moment negotiating with their license holders to say, hey, is it okay if we actually do Wi-Fi leaderboards online store in this product? Because it's what the market demands. And, you know, they're already testing the waters. They're like, you know, at games are already doing the investigative work with their leaderboard solution for um, NBA Jam. So they already have test case out there and data to help them make that that data-driven decision about whether it's viable or not and yes we we know that john has confirmed in the past that it, it's you can chuck wi-fi in there but you know you've got to have the ecosystem surrounding it to make it work and that's the expensive bit but that's the direction they need to go because all the other all the other markets like at games say what you want about them but they do actually have a very good um ecosystem Mm -hmm. you can plug into right that's that's their strength actually that's yeah. their product strength yeah that's their, their, that's their market differentiation so if at game not if um um arcade one up want to step into that same level as at games and they may not for strategic reasons if they do though they need to actually start adding capabilities into their products now i wonder uh, i've been wondering for a while if the boards that are being shipped in the Gen 1s don't already have the module in it already. 
and it will be activated by a Wi-Fi update or like a USB update. I'm just really curious because <clears throat> if they know that that's the direction they want to go in and they, they would have been planning out Gen 1 and Gen 2, you can guarantee it, right? Like if I was doing it and if I knew that when Gen 2 came around, I'd have all these customers wanting to like get upgraded boards for their games. I would be future-proofing that board now with the understanding that I'm going to be adding Wi-Fi almost certainly in Generation 2, and that Wi-Fi module would be just off or just not catered for in the software, and when the software then supports it, it just magically starts working, you know? I don't think I'm as optimistic as you. (laughs) You don't think? I don't. I don't. And the reason why I say that is based off of what they've done with their arcade cabinets. Um, They have, to date, they have NBA Jam, and they are doing, I think, Marvel vs. Capcom, I think, is getting the Wi-Fi put in. Um, I don't remember if, I don't think Golden Axe has it or not, but they were, but they're for sure talking about Golden Tee. They're not talking about retroactively being allowed to upgrade your old cab to in- incorporate that. I mean, you'd have to literally buy the whole brand new board, and that's not going to be a cheap little piece that you know, an add on. Um, and there's going to be probably enough improvements to something like Golden Tea for the cab itself, uh, considering I-, I think that was a wave one cabinet for them that uh, those owners might very well want to just plain upgrade completely um, with, a, with a whole repurchase. The, so I think that they very much play to what it needs, like what increments can they do that the customer base is cool with. Uh, they're still going to have to figure out, yeah, are you going to be able to add games or not? And I think in the case of like the Star Wars cabinet, it's you're only going to be able to add Star Wars games. With the Marvel cab, you'd only be able to add Marvel. With the Attack from yeah. Mars, you'd only be able to add Williams. So because why is that? This is their model. This is their business model. They want to sell more and more and more. Look at how many Pac-Man releases they have. And they keep on releasing Pac-Man in various incarnations. And you'd think that the public would be sick of Pac-Man, and yet people still are buying these cabs. Mm. So because it's slightly different art, slightly different product offering, like different games on each one. They different games, the monitor is better, you know, the buttons are a little bit better, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, you know, certainly, you know, if we look into my claims that, yes, the next one will absolutely have a second screen, then that would not fit in with that module board already having Wi-Fi on it because... That would make it well number one the cabinet that we have now that's being released and sold now doesn't support the second cabinet and i don't see them uh, sorry doesn't support the second monitor so i wouldn't see them going oh look you know you can upgrade your existing box and put a new monitor in it no they just make a new one because that's just too hard so um even though mel says it's easy enough to swap the boards out like that's not something that an average consumer would actually care to do. I don't think. I mean, I'm so. just gonna say, do you know how much? <laughs> do you know how much the lit up marquee is? On um, if you want to buy a lit up marquee, it's eighty bucks for just a lit marquee. But just with a LED yes. light in the back of it. Yes. Uh, really? Yes. Wow. So that's, that's a severe that's piece of non tech. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I I think that they're very much going to see what the market will bear and incrementally up do upgrades and put things it will, in. It will be a full, <clears throat> pardon me, a full product upgrade. It won't be a an upgrade like a a hardware upgrade that you can install yourself. It's going to be correct. A so I think if brand new box, I think if anything, you're going to see Wi-Fi the next wave. Uh, as for a second monitor, I think that would be not until a third wave. Mm, I, I think the, the, my opinion is the market's that hot yeah. at the moment that, that it will be in the next wave. That's my prediction. Let's mark this episode. <laughs> say, this is the prediction. So, um, 
knowing that uh, at games is kind of driving in terms of, hey, we've got second monitor, hey, we've got Wi-Fi, downloadable games, um, and that we think that that's going to drive what Arcade 1-Up does. What is Arcade 1-Up doing that you think will drive at games? That at games is going to go, ooh, we need to adopt that. That's an interesting question, which I haven't given a lot of thought to. Um, let's see. Well, I think what I've seen in the at games forums, I mean, they're looking with all the Farsight games to have everything locally installed. So I think they're realizing very quickly that streaming isn't something that you do with Pinball. Um, so they're looking at, um, I think all the new Farsight titles that are being produced for At Games are going to be downloadable ROMs that you can install onto the hardware. You're talking about all the, the Taito games, or Taito. How do you pronounce it? It's probably Taito. The, the Taito titles that uh, Farsight, we're assuming, is going to be working on. Yeah, I think there's a few other ones too. They're, like They might be bringing in some other Farsight tables as well that um, will be going on there. I've what, like what? Seen, don't know. They're not being super revealing. About well, but no, but what I'm saying is what other Farsight tables beyond Stern could they bring in? Uh, well, what I mean that, I think not all the tables are available yet on the platform. So I think they're releasing them incrementally. So all the, all the ones that Farsight have made, like all the Gottlieb ones, that's well yeah but okay so jared may not be aware i made videos of all the tables that are going to be <laughs> available on all the various cabinets and i guess i have not made one i haven't done one about godly hmm mm -hmm. look for that folks i guess i'm gonna to have to be doing that the 22 tables the two that are not going to be included uh are the original we did talk about this the original version yeah. of uh, el dorado and uh, they hurt. Yeah. Oh wait, is it big hurt? Big yeah, show. It's big, hurt. big hurt. Yeah, big hurt. Big, big the baseball hurt. one. Baseball. Yeah. Um, but other than that, there's only 24 Gottlieb tables total th with those two included. So take those out. 22. There's the 22 that are going to be included. Beyond that, you have I think it's 18 or 16 or 18 Stern titles. Uh that I don't think they're going to be allowed to have locally installed in cabinet mode. Well, maybe not. Because I don't see. think, well, and I say that because I don't think Stern wants them to. And when Arcuda, when they were doing the whole Arcuda thing, the Stern tables were specifically not converted. Excluded. Yeah, they were excluded. Hmm. And beyond that, Farsight doesn't have any tables. Yeah, true. Well, I think that what they've learned, like if we cycle back to the question of what will, what is at games taught? That's what, what is um, RK one up taught at games? Um, I think in general, they're going to try and make all the pinball games first class citizens on the cabinets. Okay. So that you could actually play them locally. Um, I think potentially as well, uh, this might be a byproduct, but what I think is that, you know, because Arcade went up the the hardware and everything on there is designed to work like one to one with the um the games that are installed on it, giving it a better overall experience, like, you know, the the solenoid feedback and the accelerometer tilt and stuff like that. One thing that's missing on at games is the fact that if you bring your own PC and plug it in um, you lose accelerometer tilt and you lose, um, uh, well, they don't even have haptics. So um, they, or do they? I thought they said that they had solenoids, but they haven't yeah. said how many. With what the games would want from, would learn from what the market is asking with regards to what Arcade 1UP has put out is that one-to-one -one connection that is truly communicating and, and working 100% as dedicated with those tables that are built into it. Um, yeah. Really offering a first-class experience. But you don't think there's going to be anything that they want from cabinet design or 
I guess that's really what, what it comes down to. Camera, ca cabinet design and uh, hardware design. Well, it's, this is a problem. Like, I think for for everything that I, that that At Games is, they're probably the cabinet, honestly, that is going the right way in the market. Like, they're offering things that, like, at a pretty good price point, let's be serious, that most cabinet builders expect. So they expect that back glass, they expect the DMD that's separated, which, you know, both products have, but that that back glass is the thing that people are really getting the most excited about with the At Games product. Okay. So I actually think from a from a hardware product offering, I think actually Arcade One Up have some catching up to do with At Games. I'm not suggesting that the At Games game ecosystem is in any way superior to the Arcade One Up at games ecosystem uh well at the arcade one up games that are being offered but they do have the advantage that they must have done some market research different to arcade one up or had to make some decisions based on price point etc about what they wanted to produce because like really the cabinet design aside there might be some tweaks they can actually make to the cabinet design which i think flattening it out like arcade one up has done and recessing the screen does seem to make it look better. I'd need to see it in person, but it feels a little bit more pinball-like doing it like that. So yeah, there could be some cues they could take from RK1 of about cabinet design, but really the overall layout of what they've got is more down the line of what a more pinball enthusiast would expect in the cabinet. Um, and the thing that is intriguing is that with the attack from Mars wave there, uh, the thing that would be really nice. And they, I mean, th this comes down to why they wouldn't have included, um, safe cracker, um, in the, the list of tables, even if they have or haven't already, because you need that back glass, right? Oh, so yeah, you're not kidding. You yeah, absolutely so, do need that back glass. So that's, that's, really before they go down any of those tables they they need to look at that back glass even even cyclone i oh, not cyclone uh, no cyclone well cyclone has the the little spinning it doesn't really matter much but it does have the spinning it disc but it's still a thing. uh junkyard has uh a, a couple mm -hmm. of lights that that go up but that junkyard is coming out as part of the pack so that's gonna be interesting how they're gonna handle that yeah so yeah Little uh, little yeah. reality is going to have to be uh, <laughs> altered in terms of what you're. You know, hey, why is the back glass now suddenly where my table is? <laughs> so is let me just ask: Is the Attack from Mars table up for pre-order yet? Honestly, I, I don't is. know. I've only heard that the Star Wars and Marvel table have uh, been put up for pre-order. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, I wonder why that might be. I don't do why he, Jared's got that uh, cat that ate the canary look. Why, Jared? Why? What do you not? I don't know what you're speculating on here. Based on our discussions that we just had, then um, there's something fundamentally missing from that particular range. There's a technical limitation that they they need to solve potentially, unless they manage somehow to zoom in on an element of a back glass into the DMD and show those elements that are on the screen that you need to actually select from, like in Junkyard, for example. Um, or they just, you know, do the thing and just use that, break the illusion and use the main screen to flick up to the back glass, which is just going to look really rubbish. Let's be serious. Like, that's not going to be good in a cabinet. Um, they've got potentially something they're working through right now to potentially test the market on what a two-screen device would look like. Hmm. That's my call. All right, Jared. Jared's uh, he's got some bold predictions this episode. He's going out on a limb. <laughs> um, well, if we're going to speculate, let's not stuff around. Hey? <laughs> let's let's get into this and let's really throw some wild ideas out there. 